In this movie, I want to talk about managing your layers. All right, as you can see, we've got many, many layers. We have the four original large guys over there, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. Nine and four, 13, 14 layers. We've got over a dozen of these things. And if you take a look at my layers panel, you can see that now, in order for me to see everything inside here, I need to start doing the scrolling thing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put these in folders. Now, uh, I want to have one set of folders for the little balloons, the smaller rotated ones, and I want to have one folder for the larger original four that I had there. And I could look inside here and start selecting all of the guys that have, you know, the word copy and then two and three applied to them and all that kind of stuff. But it's a lot easier for me to just select these four guys. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the layers panel and I'm going to click on the blue balloon layer, that's the first, right, original. And then if I hold down the, the command or control key and click on and jump over and skip these smaller rotated ones and just click on the green balloon and then skip over some of the yellow ones and go to the original yellow balloon and then come down here and again, command or control click on the red balloon, I now have these guys selected. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna put them in a folder so I'm just going to come to the options menu across the top up here and I'm going to choose new group from layers. I personally believe that they should have the word selected inside here. So it should read new group from selected layers, but what do I know? All right. So I'm just going to call these guys large balloons. And there you go inside that layer stack. All right. Now it's kind of important to uh, uh, know where things kind of were in. And because I originally started off with the blue one up there, all these guys that were down kind of jumped up to where that was. I believe that if I had the red one selected, then they all would have gone down to the bottom of the stack. Let's see if that's a true statement. I'm going to just do a command Z to undo that. And let's just see if that's a true statement. So I'm going to click on the background and I'm going to click on the first guy. I'm going to hold down the command key and click on this one. Command key, click on this one. Command key, click on that one. That would be control on the PC. And if I come over here and choose new group from layers, and if I call these guys large balloons and click on that, nope, went to the top of the stack. All right, so fooled me once, fooled me twice blah, blah, blah. All right. So anyways, it doesn't really matter. If I want to, I can just click these guys and drag it down and oops, click and drag. Okay. Click and drag down to get it at the bottom of the stack. Now I want to put all these guys in a, another folder. So I'm just going to click on the top one, hold the shift key this time and click on the last one that allows me to, con you know, to select a continuous bunch all in a row. And I'm going to now come over here and go under new group from layers. And I'm going to call this one small and rotated balloons. There we go. All right. Now, if I want to see the document with just the large balloons, then what I could do is just turn off the visibility icon for those guys and put that in there like that. All right. Now, I, you know, there's there's many, many other things that we can do with this. As an example, let's just say I want all of these guys to be just a little bit smaller than what they are. I firmly believe that if I went under the edit menu and went to free transform, you'll see that the application grabs every one of these guys. All right. And then I can actually hold down the shift key and the option key to shrink to the center, and then I'm just going to make them a little bit smaller. And I'm only doing that so you know that it is possible that you can do that, all right? With this selected, if I don't like the position of these guys, I can actually just, uh, I'm gonna unselect that guy, and now with the folder set selected, I can actually move everything as one. All right, there you go. Now, I don't like the idea of having these smaller balloons in front of, visually, the larger balloons. So I'm just gonna drag that folder set down until I see the double line and then release. Now you can see that the large balloons are indeed on top in the stacking order. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to try to find this guy there. So the easiest thing to do is to come over here and just click on that. So that is the 
Is it not going to allow me to do that? It won't let me do that once I'm in here. So I have to just come over here and find it. There you go. All right. So there you go. Learn something else new. Uh, auto select that does not work when you're in a folder unless maybe now it will let's see nope auto select will only choose the folder that it's in all right so i'm going to turn that off because it's obviously useless at this point in time hit the delete key to get rid of that one and then what i want to do is i want to grab this guy and i want to grab this guy and because I have the move tool as my currently active tool, all I really, really need to do is use my arrow keys from balloons. All right, I don't want that one. I chose the wrong one. There you go, get out, there you go. And I'm just gonna move these guys over and move them up a little bit. And I'm also going to just scale those guys. So free transform and I'm just going to scoot those back a little bit, make them a little bit smaller. There you go. All right, and this guy here, I might want to do that with that guy as well. So Command T to bring that guy up, and there you go. Now, something else I want to show you, and I think this is kind of neat, and I'm going to do it with the large, well, I, I'll do it with the smaller one. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy, all right? So I'm going to drag this over to here just so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got that copy sitting there. And if I was to go under the edit, free transform, all right, and you saw what I was doing earlier, which was just rotating, and I was rotating these guys around like that, all right, um, what's going on is we're rotating based on this little center thing here. This is your uh, rotation, center rotation point. I can actually put my cursor inside here and drag this down. And if I put it down where the actual string of the balloon ends, then I can actually rotate this around like that. All right. So now I'm wondering if I actually do something. No, there you go. I just dragged it out. <laughs> Silly person. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, uh, just rotate these guys around and there you go. All right, so now if I wanted to have multiple balloons kind of going on there, what I'd have to do is get out of that, all right, make a couple of copies of this and uh, then just rotate them. So if I were to choose to duplicate the layer, I uh, see it's going to give it to me that way, so I'm just going to do it this way and make a couple of duplicates. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that guy. I'm going to come under the edit and choose free transform. Put this down into here. And then I can come over to here and I can rotate this as an example 30 degrees. All right, accept the transformation and then come to the next one and do this and free transform and put this down into here and then come over here and set that to let's go 60 degrees All right there you go so you can see how i'm starting to show you some of the different things that are kind of interesting uh, to go about creating your visual effects this little thing here that I just showed you is the thing that I did to create that spiral background. All right. So now I'm just going to take these duplicates and hit the delete key to get rid of that kind of stuff. I've got that sitting up here just like this. And uh, that's it for this movie. We've dealt, dealt with creating the um, uh, folders to kind of get a hold of uh, managing everything that's going on here and uh, uh, in the next movie we're going to deal with further uh, creation of this project. Continuing from where we left off in the last movie uh, I've decided to bring in my spiral background and this bluish fill layer, which I have currently turned off. I can turn it on just so you can see it. All it, its only job is to lighten all right, the spiral background. I'm gonna expand the spiral background so you can actually see what's made up of this stuff in here. This is my spiral background created in the same fashion that I did when I started to rotate the balloons and all that kind of stuff. Then I put on a little bit of a layer mask 
And as I said in the past, white reveals, black conceals. This is not black, but it's a very, very large, soft-edged uh, paintbrush that was set to maybe about 20 or 30 percent opacity, black. And I just dabbed it a couple of times in the center, therefore reducing and making the center area here lighter than the outer edge. All right, this here is the blue fill layer here. If I was to turn that off, you can see that uh, it has an effect as well as uh, uh, whatever. All right, and then I have my white background and then again, the default background of anything there. Everything is kind of blending in. All right, this here is at 49%. All right, and if I came in here and put it at 100%, it would be much, much darker. So what I want to do is I just want to have it at that 49 or 50%. So there we go. All right, so we're back to that. I'm going to uh, uh, collapse this because I don't want to visually see that any longer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and say, okay, something's, <laughs> something's definitely wrong with this. All right. Um, I don't want to see the white stuff on the edges. So what I need to do is I need to crop this. All right. There's a couple of ways you can go about cropping. I'm going to choose to use the actual crop tool. All right. But just before I do that, I just want to take a look and see what my actual size is. And you can see that this is 1500 high by 21 wide. All right, so 1500 pixels high, that's, that's, well, okay, if you take a look at it, it's only five inches high, but this thing is eventually gonna end up being a um, five inch by five inch square, obviously. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna grab the crop tool. Now, with the crop tool selected, by default, I'm at unconstrained. That means I can actually just kind of start coming in here and cropping and doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Well, I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna escape out of there, and now I'm back at the default. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to this drop down menu here and I'm gonna choose from one of these predefined aspect ratios and I'm gonna choose square. Hmm, so if I choose that and click like that, look what happens, isn't that just awesome? <laughs> Went right to the center of the image, all right? So you can see here is the rotation point and it's in the center of the image and if I was to measure this distance from here to here, and then from here to here, I'll bet you they're even. All right, anyways, that's a never, uh, something I don't wanna get into at this point in time, but I know now that this is 1500 high, and because I'm using the square aspect ratio, it's gonna be 1500 wide. All I have to do now is put my type down in the bottom here. It says happy birthday, bring in my confetti layer, and we are laughing. All right, so I'm gonna click on this to accept that crop. There we go. So now we have this is much smaller. What I probably want to do is move my balloons over to center them a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first and then I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the second set, the folder sets that I have sitting there. Actually, I want to get out of the crop tool and I want to have the move tool as my currently active tool. And I'm just going to hit the arrow key until I get this over and center this somewhat so it's visually a little bit more centered. That's all, I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing precise, all right? So now that I've got that going on and I've showed you a little bit of what's going on inside that uh, spiral background layer, I'm just gonna turn this guy on so we're back to having much, much more brightness going on as far as that's concerned, all right? now. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring in the, all right, I want to create my text. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now uh, make sure that I'm on the topmost layer and I'm going to click there to start typing. Now my type is going to be orange because that's what it was the very, very last time I did anything with it. So what I want to do is I want to, not that it matters, it doesn't matter a hill of beans difference what color my text is, but I'd rather it be black. So I'm going to click on the uh, text color, color chip there. I get the color picker in here and I'm going to just click and drag around. All right. And you can see wherever I'm dragging my little white circle, all right, this is showing up as my before and after, all right? I'm just gonna drag this down into the bottom and notice I'm dragging way out of there to make sure that I absolutely get, all right, these guys here, zero, zero, zero. All right, so now it's absolutely black type. And now my cursor's flashing in here, so I'm gonna type in happy birthday. 
All right, there you go. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going and trying to find the font that I used and everything else. I'm just going to leave it with this font here. All right, now eventually what I'm going to want to do is uh, center that. So why don't I show you how to center something? And I'm going to do that by grabbing the Move tool, and then eventually these alignment options will become available to me once I have another layer selected. So that other layer selected is going to be the background layer. So now I have these two guys selected. I now have my alignment features here. So I'm just going to click on this guy here, which is the center alignment, just like that. Then I'm going to click on this guy here, and I want to drop this down. I can go one. All right, I'm using the move tool, and I'm hitting the down arrow key, so I go one pixel at a time. If I hold the shift key down, I go in increments of 10. So that's kind of working for me. Um, I'm happy with that for now. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to throw a gradient inside of that. So the uh, first thing I need to do in order to throw the gradient in is I need to uh, load these shapes here of the letters as active selection. All right, so let me see if this is going to be an option to me. I know it's an option to me on pixel-based layers. I don't know if it's an option in here, and I'm looking for... The rasterize, no, create, did it, 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 no, it's not there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called command clicking a layer. All right, command clicking a layer will load the elements on that layer as an act of selection. Beautiful. Loaded it as an act of selection. You want to know something at this point in time? I don't need to type layer anymore, so I can throw that into the garbage. And then what I want to do is I want to put a nice little rainbow gradient in here, but I want it to be on its own layer. So I create a brand new blank layer, and I'm just going to call this one rainbow gradient type. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and nest it in with the paint bucket tool. This is the gradient tool. So I'm going to choose the gradient tool. Now, up over here, in the options menu, we have all these different options for the gradient tool. And up here, we have the current foreground to background, which is black to white. If I click on this guy here, you can see that I end up with a number of other options. All right. So I'm going to choose that as my gradient. And now if I take my cursor and start as an example here and go to there, I now end up with a gradient. All I did was drag from the upper left-hand corner of the H down to the lower right-hand corner of the Y. So I get a little bit of a diagonal, but I'm actually going through the whole gradient from blue to yellow. All right? Okay. So now I want to deselect this. So I'm just going to come in here and choose deselect. All right, so now I have the happy birthday stuff going on. What I do need to have is my confetti layer come in. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back out of that tool. I'm going to come under here. I'm going to choose File, Open Recent. I'm going to open up my spiral. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of this just so I can move things around and see how things are going. I'm going to take my confetti folder set and bring it over here and release. And I'm going to close off this guy, and you can see that I have my confetti folder set sitting there. All right, now the way this works is... I had my confetti layer all right, that I have here, but I wanted more confetti coming down here. So what I did was I duplicated, all right, I duplicated this layer just by coming down and duplicating. And then what I did was I moved it down. So I have the move tool selected. I hold the shift key down. We can just do something like this. But before I did that, all right, so let's just go back a little bit. All right, I've got that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it. All right, so if I go under the Edit menu and choose Transform, I'm going to cho choose to flip this vertically. All right, so I flipped it vertically, and now what I'm going to do is, holding the Shift key, I'm going to get this to go down here. All right, and so now we've got this kind of stuff sitting in here, just kind of like that. And then if you want to, you can offset it, whatever. All right? There you go. That's beautiful. Works for me. All right, so that's what I did with that. I'm just going to throw that into the trash can because I do like what I actually have 
here. I'm going to collapse that. There's my confetti layer sitting this way. And I am now going to drag this down and say maybe I want this just on the background. So it's not on the balloons, or I can drag this up and say, okay, I don't want it on top of a happy birthday, but I want it on top of all of the separate balloons. Okay, so that kind of wraps things up for this aspect of the layers stuff. And what I want to do now is I want to revisit that Alaska project because that is going to deal with adjustment layers, layer masks, and uh, uh, opacity fills and clipping groups and all that kind of stuff. And we'll start all that off in the next movie.